Right, focus, we in focus. Hello everybody, Dane here, and I have been tagged to do the ringing in the new year tag. So hopefully this won't be, too, this like will be out before February, hopefully. Oh, I don't know, I've got lots of editing to do. Uh, this was created, as far as I can tell, by Bookmark Chronicles. I was tagged by I Ain't Finna Read That. Great channel, um, <laughs> it's got a great sense of humour. It reads some like really interesting uh, books as well. Um, I can't, I'm trying to think, I think it's, uh, I'm not sure what his actual name is, I think on uh, Goodreads he's like Pythalo Grey or something like that. So we're gonna go with that. But uh, cracking booktuber and uh, very chilled and relaxed but at the same time like, I would say quite intellectual and quite, um, it makes you think, you know, his channel makes you think. So uh, really glad that he tagged me. There are eight questions here that I'm going to go through and do, and then I'm going to tag a few people to take the tag at the end. So, question one, best book or series that you've read in 2020? Well, that would be telling, wouldn't it? Because I have my top books of the year video. I actually haven't um, finished planning out because basically I do my top books of each quarter, and then when I've finished my top books of the final quarter, I then do my top books of the year, bringing all of those together. So I haven't figured out yet what my top book of the year is. I will tell you that very recently, right at the end of the year, I read this bad boy. I read Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead by Olga Tokarczuk and, uh, sorry, Olga Tokarczuk, I think it's how you pronounce her name. I'm not entirely sure. Translated from Polish, it's like a literary fiction murder mystery um, with some really interesting themes throughout it, very philosophical, and it's one that'll make you, you think for sure. Um, it did lose a bit of steam towards the end, so I don't think it's my top book of the year, but it's definitely, I've got to say, probably in my top ten, so we'll go for that. Question number two, authors that you've discovered this year and would like to read more from. Um, I don't know if I've necessarily discovered in this year, but I've definitely read a couple of uh, Albert Camus books and really enjoyed reading those, and again, talking back about I ain't finna read that. Um, he's recently read The Straight, uh, the, what was it, The Stranger? No, that's his well-known one. He read the one that I read. In fact, I think he read both of the ones that I read. Well, this year I read um, The Outsider, that was it. I read The Outsider this year, um, and I really liked that. Um, and I am finna read that, didn't quite like it as much. He, he was kind of saying that nothing much happened, which is true, but then it's very much about the ideas in it. And then I also read The Myth of Sisyphus, um, which is kind of about uh, absurdism, and like, if there's no point to life, why don't we commit suicide? That's like one of the seven options that he comes up with. Fortunately for us, another one of the options is like, make art, find meaning in art. So that's what I'm doing. But yeah, I would like to read more Camus next year. Question three, a best book turned movie slash TV adaptation of 2020, or most anticipated adaptation for 2021? So I don't really watch adaptations. I know there's a new Lord of the Rings show coming. That might be all right. Um, I don't know when the His Dark Materials series came out, but I probably watched series one of that this year. I think series two is out now and I haven't seen it. Um, I, can't, I think I caught up with The Handmaid's Tale TV adaptation this year as well. But honestly, I don't, I don't really care for them too much, so I, I guess we'll go with The Lord of the Rings as the most anticipated one for next year, just to see what they do with it, because I think Amazon spent like a billion dollars or whatever just to have the rights to make the show. Question number four, have your reading habits changed at all this year and have you gotten into any new genres? No, not really. I'm, I'm old now, mate. I'm 31 and a half. So by this point, I'm pretty set into my reading habits and in terms of genres, I read pretty widely anyway. I guess the only answer I can really think of here is I might be reading some more kind of romance, although they're not even really that. They're kind of the equivalent of contemporary fiction book from like the 1930s. So uh, the Agatha Christie, Mary Westmacott novels. So I've read all of the books that Agatha Christie published under her own name. So now I'm just working my way through the, the Westmacott book. Question number five, favorite ship of the year or new beloved character? Well, I don't really do shipping um, because, I mean, I don't like romance in books anyway. So, I mean, I guess we could do friend shipping, but even then, eh. Uh, so favorite new ca or new beloved character? Jesus, not Jesus. I mean, I guess the only thing I can think of is like Gerald or Rivia. I think I started, or at least I made some progress with the Witcher books this year. I've only read like the first three, but I wouldn't say he's particularly beloved. I just think he's an interesting character. Uh, I actually find with the Witcher books, the most interesting parts are the bits that kind of make you ask questions about society and morality and philosophy and stuff. You know, like, is it morally right to go and kill a monster and all this stuff? 
So that's the best I got for you guys for that one. Question number six, have you started planning your TBR for 2021 and how many books do you hope to read? Well, in terms of my TBR, it's just whatever books I own. So I have my unread bookcase up there. I think I'm currently down to about 127, which is good. At some point this year, I was down to like 45 and then I bought a lot of job lots on eBay. So I've been working through, like I have a lot of Asimov and Philip K. Dick and like some sci-fi authors up there to work through. So uh, that's probably what's on my TBR. Uh, as for my reading goal, I'm just gonna do what I did this year. So this year I said it's 366, one book for each day of the year, including the leap year. I failed, not necessarily miserably. I think I'm on like 290 or something like that. So I think next year we'll do three, 365. Um, I don't really care about reading goals, so I just find it like an aesthetically pleasing number, you know? Uh, and it's interesting to see how long I, I can kind of make it while looking as though I still have a shot. Like for the last two months of the year, it's like, oh, I'm not, never gonna make that, you know? Which is fine. But it's nice during the start of the year to be like, oh, I'm kind of average in a book a day. Question number seven, will you participate in any reading challenges or readathons? I'm bad at doing these. Um, I need to get better at them really. So hopefully I'll try and participate in a few. Uh, what I did do in 2020 was reread a thon uh, organized by Alex Black, and it was previously done by Catalyst Reads before that. Uh, shout out to you who's watching if you remember Catalyst Reads, great channel. Um, he left the community unfortunately, but uh, he made a big splash I think while he was here. So um, I don't know if anybody's doing another reread a thon in 2021, but I do quite like that idea of just rereading a book a month as well, so I might do that. We'll, we'll see. And question number eight, any New Year's resolutions, bookish, blogging, vlogging, or otherwise? Not really, I wanna keep up with the kind of slightly higher production standard I've got going on the channel. Um, so there's that, uh, maybe keep learning. I've got lots of like writing goals and stuff, new books hopefully coming out in 2021. A few of them literally ready to publish, but I'm just kind of waiting, biding my time, I guess. Um, yeah, and I wanna save up and start looking to move house as well, so. Uh, Potentially buying a house, we will see. We'll see how much money I can make, because, you know, that's that's the key factor, isn't it? So there we have it, that is the ringing in the new year tag. I'm gonna tag some people, they might already have done it, if they have, or, you know, if you don't wanna do it, feel, feel free not to. If you're watching and I haven't tagged you, you're also welcome to do it as well. I left my phone over there, so I'm just gonna tag some channels off the top of my noggin. So we're gonna go for the archive, Graham. Um, and the other Graham, Graham Sillers reads books. I'm gonna tag Todd the Librarian, be keen to see his answers, Charlie Heathcote, Mindy's Book Journey, uh, Cats and Camera, we'll do two more, uh, Jason from Jason's Weird Reads. Uh, I guess I, I, I'll tag uh, Daniel from The Reading Werewolf as well. So there we have it, that's my take on the ringing in the new year book tag, that was very difficult to say. As always, don't forget to let me know your thoughts on this in the comments, let me know if you've read any of the books I mentioned, or feel free to share your answers to these questions. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot, bye bye.